We are learning new details after the bombshell report on altered intelligence regarding ISIS, which says top Pentagon officials may have been cooking the books to make it seem as if the terror group was less of a threat. Joining us now with some exclusive information on the scandal is retired Brigadier General Tony Tata. So, can I call you Tony? Okay? You, you sure may. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I call you Justin? You can call me whatever you want. <laughs> Water's world, actually. Um, so, what we know is after Obama retreated from Iraq, and we saw the Arab Spring, we saw genocide, we saw the president say that this was the JV team, and him constantly downplaying the ISIS threat. You're saying that there's a reason why the president was so detached from the reality on the ground with ISIS. Yeah, so there's chaos all over the Middle East. You've got the uh, Syrian civil war happening. You've got President Obama's timeline. You know, he campaigned on getting out of Iraq, so he didn't want anything counter to that narrative. And what you have is uh, mostly good, hardworking people, majors, lieutenant colonels, civilians, and central command saying, Houston, we have a problem. This is not how uh, it's being portrayed right now. And so there was this meeting, and one of my sources tells me that uh, this individual was told by the president's briefer to not provide product of record, as it's called in the intelligence community, that is counter to the narrative that the president is putting out there, that everything's great, we're out of Iraq, high five, let's move on. And meanwhile, it's pretty obvious to the casual observer, you got the Arab Spring, you've got the Syrian civil war. And so now what happens is they're told by the, the president's briefer who works in the office of you know, the, the director of national intelligence. And that individual then is telling CENTCOM, don't give me anything on the record, make a phone call, secure phone call, which is not traceable, which has no record. If you have any bad news for me, that's counter to this narrative. And so we actually turn the other way because of that. And then two years later, we have a problem, a real problem. ISIS has grown. They're a formidable force. And that two years allowed ISIS to take root. So that's the real issue here that really is stemming out from these whistleblowers in Central Command that are really more worried about their country than their efficiency reports. Yeah, and they don't treat whistleblowers very well in this administration. Greg, question? Can I call you General? You can call me <laughs> whatever you would like, Greg. Um, uh, basically, this is reverse deletion. And right. I, I mean, it, the thing is, yeah. it, isn't this what everybody is going to be doing now? It, it, you're, instead of destroying damaging evidence after the fact, you prevent the damaging evidence from ever occurring. Sure. I think that this is the way, this is what people are going to be doing in the age of leaks and, every, like, and everything like this. Uh, and it covered, it, it's, it's not illegal. It's just what people do. Well, it's highly irresponsible right. for a senior official a like this <laughs> yeah. uh, to say, look, do not give me anything that's yeah. bad news yeah. uh, because we're trying to portray that this exit from Iraq is the right thing to do in the face of mm -hmm. chaos going on over there. And now we've got a real valid national security threat mm -hmm. that was born out of this directive to Central Command and the people that are there that are being there that are whistleblowing are being reprised against. Are They're, people dying from this? Do you uh, believe? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, the people burned in cages yes. are are dying from this. And meanwhile, you have good American soldiers, sailor, airmen, Marines, and civilians that were in the Central Command intelligence that are being isolated and uh, targeted by. Uh, people that are in the J-2 and CENTCOM and previous folks that were there as well. Do you think any of them have been prevented uh, from getting a promotion? I, I, I think they've been run out of the service. Uh, one young lady spent $140,000 on legal bills. How, who's got that kind of money to defend herself against this kind of thing? She ultimately won, uh, which is you know a story that nobody's talking about either. Mm -hmm. So she'll mm -hmm. recruit that money, but her mm -hmm. career is shot. Mm -hmm. And and so the reason you're not hearing a lot of people come out is because you know they have families, they have careers, and and the, these people in the CENTCOM J2 are hammering and targeting. The good news is General Joe Botel, who is the Central Command Commander as of March of this year, has brought in uh, uh, Major General uh, Dave Quantock, a high quality, classy individual that's going to right this ship, and Joe has given uh, Dave a, a, a mandate to, to fix this mess. Well, I think Democrats in, on the House Intelligence Committee, I'm thinking here of Congressman Adam Schiff, have said that there was an insular environment that led to this. Now, the news here that you're bringing is there's some connection that would lead you toward the White House. And that's where I have a question for you, because 
it's clear from the description of events as you portray it that the White House was getting the information that there was some negativity. If there is negativity, tell us. But they didn't want it on the record. So that's a distinction I wanted to emphasize and see what you thought. Yeah, Juan, well, so you can imagine how that's going if you're the president's briefer and, and the president's saying, wait a minute, you just told me, you know, we just left Iraq and now you're telling me things are bad. And so it could, it could have been the president saying, don't tell me this, or it could have been the briefer going back after, you know, a rough uh, meeting saying, hey, look, don't give me any more of this stuff. I don't want to bring it to the president. So, and, you know, I'm not in that, but my source was, was the, the next guy to get the word. And, and that, that is, uh, you know, legitimate what happened there. General, it sounds like there was a, a nerve and a protocol for going forward that nothing would hit the president's desk, foreign or domestic, domestic unless it was sort of vetted, cleared, and no record of it um, to meet and match the president's expectations. Kim, only if it met the president's narrative that things were great, the Iraq exit was the right thing to do, that kind of intelligence, have product of record, send that up. But if it's counter to that narrative, don't, don't send it up, don't produce it, don't give me a chart, don't give me a memoranda, don't give me a link diagram that shows that things are bad and not uh, consistent wow. with what we're saying. But things are cleared up now. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go that uh, far, Juan. I think that's what he Count said. Count the bodies. It sounds like that directly contravenes national security and America's interests and assets in the field. And it causes a loss of life, casualties. Well, today, people are being reprised against in Central Command, mm -hmm. and uh, the whistleblowers uh, are not having a good life uh, well, even Like you today. said, people have died from this. General, thank you very much. Thank you.